welcome to Rel Mondays. I don't know about you, but I look forward to it. And if you don't look forward to it, eventually you will look forward to it. I'm excited that you guys have joined us on today. Or for those of you that are catching the replay, hello to you. I hope your day is going well. Um, let's open up in prayer. God, thank you for this day. God, thank you for giving us such a beautiful day and just for being with us throughout this day, every step that we've taken on today. We know that all things work together for the good of them that love you and are called according to your purpose, God. And we're just so thankful that everything that we've been through, everything we go through, is working together for your goodness, for, for goodness and for good things. And God, we just pray right now over every single person sure. that is logged in on this Bible study, whether they're logged in live or they're catching a replay. We just pray for each and every individual over their household, God. Allow them to experience you like never before, God. Allow us to have a true encounter with you, an encounter that when we are finished, we cannot say, I've never met with God. God, allow us to experience your presence and allow it to be manifested like never before in the name of Jesus. God, allow your word to come forth with a clarity that we may be able to get an understanding of what it is you have for us on today. And God, again, we just thank you for just being an awesome God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And you might notice something a little bit different. Um, I'm so excited because the weather is, like, in our favor, if you can see. I don't have a coat on. I don't have an umbrella. I don't have long sleeves on because it's beautiful out here. And we are on our front porch. And we thought it'd be an awesome, awesome, awesome switch up. I mean, we love being in the living room, but this is our element. We love being outside. Very, very true. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, we hope you had a blessed Easter yesterday. Um, we did at Relevant Church, and I hope you guys did too. If you're logging in, I'm very impressed because you are beyond just the Easter Sunday trip. <laughs> you uh you want more of the word and I'm glad that you do want more of the word mm -hmm. um, if you were with us last week you heard know that we we're going to talk about Joseph this week so if you got your Bibles can you turn to um, Genesis 39 and I love I love 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 the story of Joseph and we're going to try to hold it down without our pages blown away um, and Joseph's story is one that's kind of lengthy, but we're going to catch you up to speed to where we're going to be at tonight. Um, Joseph, you may have known him from, you know, like the kids' stories, or maybe you studied Joseph, or you've heard about Joseph, um, and how he had a coat of many colors, and how he was favored um, amongst his father. And so we're going to catch you up to, uh-oh, <laughs> we're going to catch you up to one of our, uh, one second. You can. Um, we're going to catch you up to where we are. And uh, now, all right, so Joseph is the son of Jacob. And J Joseph is Jacob's favorite son. And, you know, a lot. some people have their favorites. But Joseph was definitely his um, son. Joseph was Jacob's favorite. Amen. To the point where he gave him a coat of many colors to show his favor that was on his life. Um, one of the things was, since Joseph was favored, you know how it is when you're favored, mm -hmm. you got special privileges, it tends to have somebody that hates on you because of it, okay? Mm -hmm. So his brothers really didn't like the fact that he was favored above, you know, the rest of them. So, and him wearing that coat of many colors was one thing that made it evident that he was favored because everybody didn't have one of those. Mm -hmm. um, so, his brothers get jealous, and not only does he have this coat of many colors, but Joseph also has dreams about him ruling over his brothers and being in leadership above them. Once again, him being as young as he is, when he tells his brothers these dreams, they get really upset about it. However, he doesn't know that they're getting upset about it. Sometimes in life, God can have certain things. You can tell people about the ideas that you have, the dreams, the goals that you have, and you wonder why people get upset, or maybe you don't even know that they're upset, and you wonder why people don't support you and different things like that. Joseph went through a similar thing. He's telling his brothers, look, I'm going to be great. I'm going to be awesome. I'm going to be mighty. 
and his brothers are jealous at the fact that he would even think that he would be over them. Haters gonna hate. Haters gonna hate. And the thing about it was that Joseph didn't give himself these dreams. Right. He's saying what God has shown him. Mm -hmm. And he's just, just pouring out of his spirit, pouring out of his love for his brothers. Like, look, this is what God's going to do in my life. And I want you to be excited for me. And I want you to be, you know, chippy about it. I want you to be uplifting about it. And they're just looking like, who's this guy? Who do you think he is? And you may have experienced some relationships like that where, you know, things begin to happen in your life and they look at you like, um, who do you think they are? And um, so Joseph had a similar situation that some of us have. Um, also, not only did he dream one dream, but he dreamed two dreams. Same way like that. And so the brothers begin to come to a point where they're going to plot to kill this young boy, their brother. And it's like, how would you kill your own brother? That's kind of like lowest of lows to plan to kill your own family member. But anyway, so they plan to kill him, to take him out. Um, and they come up with a plan to get him out of here. Plan A is, you know, we throw him into a pit and say some wild animals killed him. Plan B was um, to get rid of him. Oh, Plan A was they go going to kill Joseph and put him in a pit and say some wild animals killed him. Plan B was to throw Joseph into a pit, but don't kill him. So either way, they're looking to set up Joseph to take him out. Um, so they end up not killing Joseph. They end up putting him in a pit uh, and then selling him off as a slave so that they can get paid and get rid of him. Then they dipped his clothes into animal's blood and brought it to his father and said, look, this is what happened to Joseph. Um, and it was a crazy setup, but that's what happened. And Joseph, Jacob, was so upset. He was so upset at the fact that he lost his son. Well, anyway, coming up to speed, they sold him off. And this lands Joseph right in Potiphar's house. So now if you're at Genesis 39, it says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him out of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down the hither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Okay? So now Joseph is not in an ideal situation at all. Sometimes you can find yourself doing the right things you know, you feel like you're doing the best you can and you still don't land in the most prosperous situation that you would like to find yourself in. But here we see that Joseph had done nothing wrong other than spread the word that God has given him. And he finds himself in a slavery situation. And he lands in Potiphar's house. But the one thing I love about this, that even though he lands in Potiphar's house, in verse 2 it said, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. So one of the things I would take away from this is even in your situation that doesn't look like it should be a prosperous situation, if you're leaning and dependent on God and you accept Jesus in your heart, then the Lord is with you. And wherever you are can be a prosperous situation. Amen. Amen. Um, because in 2 it says, the Lord was with Joseph and he was prosperous. And it says, and the master, in verse 3, it says, And the master saw that the Lord had made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And this is something, it didn't say that Potiphar was a believer, but he saw that everything that Joseph put his hands on began to prosper. And that's a promise that's on our lives as a believer is that, you know, when we honor God in our decisions, when we honor God in the things that we do, He will make those things prosper. Yes. Ain't that right? It's very true. Yeah. And um, one of the things is that when you seek God in those things, we put Him first, and we seek Him on the things that we do and put our hands to, then it'll prosper in a way that it points back to God. Mm-hmm. And you can't it, take any credit for it. You can't take any credit. You can't take any credit for it. And a lot of times we don't see the prosperity happen in our lives is because we're not doing mm -hmm. what we need to do. Mm -hmm. 
How many people out there have had a dream and we sit on the dream for so long and we ask God, why hasn't it come together? <laughs> but we haven't done anything. You know what I mean? We haven't made the first phone call. We're believing for God for a job, but we haven't put in the first application. We're believing God to go to college, but we haven't applied. We're believing God for a house, but we don't look at any mortgage rates. Right. You know, those kind of things. Um, but he'll prosper whatever you put your hand to. That's that's what he wants to do for you. When you see God and you honor God in those decisions, as far as moving forward, no matter what situation you are in, you can find yourself living a prosperous life. Now, one thing about it is that we have to have those eyes of like Jesus to see things the way he sees it and to see the way thing God to see things the way God wants us to see it. Because sometimes because of where we are in life, we won't see our situation mm -hmm. as prosperous. Yep. We'll totally miss the prosperity of God in our lives. You know what I mean? Kids can be acting crazy. You know, wife can be acting crazy. Husband can be acting crazy. Uh, people at job can be acting crazy. But one thing we forget sometimes is, hey, you've got a spouse. Mm -hmm. There's some people who are believing God for a spouse, right. wish they had a spouse. Some right. people are praying daily in the fact that they wish they could have kids or wish that their kids would be healthy. Or, you know, they're praying God daily that they have a job and this, that, and the other. And because we go through tests and trials on these different places, we forget that, hey, he's made us prosperous here. Right. And if we do what we're supposed to in his eyes, then we can live the even more prosperous life right where we are. Because no matter where we are physically, if God is with us, then we can live a prosperous life. That's right. And what I mean by prosperous is not just financial. Because people can have money and not be prosperous. That's right. Amen. Um, prosperity is a whole kind of thing. It's a whole being kind of thing. Well, here we are, back at 39, where it says, And the master saw that the Lord was with him, and that all, and the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. So he prospered enough that Potiphar put everything in Joseph's hand. His owner. His owner. <laughs> If that ain't the best slave deal ever, what. I don't know what is. So he put everything at his hand. Mm -hmm. In verse 5 it said, It came to pass from the time that he made him overseer of his house and over all that he had, and the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sakes. Mm -hmm. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Now, some of the places that you find yourself in will begin to prosper just because you're there. And the yeah. Bible says that he made that place prosper because for whose sake? Mm -hmm. For Joseph's sake. sake. Yeah. That's some awesome stuff. Because sometimes we find ourselves, why am I here? Why have I been placed in this job? Um, why am I facing the things I'm facing? Or why did I have this connection that I have? Why am I interacting with this person? Maybe it's so that prosperity can come to their house because of you. Mm. Maybe it's so healing can come to their house because of you. Right. Maybe it's joy can come to their house because of you. Which gives you a whole different perspective right. of where you are and your appreciation, like you're talking about, you know, of where you are. And it, it opens up a whole new door. Like, God, I don't want to be at this job. I want a better job. And it's like, you just can't seem to make anything click. And like you're saying, maybe there's a reason right. why you're there. Because you've got to bring prosperity to the people that are around you or to whatever organization that you're working for. Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, here, he's, he's a slave. Right. But even it being a slave... Because he's honoring God, this slave has been put over everything in Joseph's house. Everything. Verse 6, it says, And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not all he had, save the bread which Joseph did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well-favored. 
And now I'm going to hop over to the message version to make it even more clear. In verse 6 it says in the message, Joseph was a strikingly handsome man. And as time went on, his master's wife came, became infatuated with Joseph and one day said, sleep with me. In verse 8, he wouldn't do it. He said to his master's wife, Look at me here. My master doesn't give a second thought to anything that goes on here. He puts me in charge of everything he owns. He treats me as equal. The only thing he hasn't turned over to me is you, and you're his wife. After all, how could I violate his trust and sin against God? So the only thing that Potiphar withholds from Joseph is his wife. You over everything else, man. Over the entire thing. You're over everything else. Yeah. And the only thing that you are not supposed to have is my wife. And the one thing he's not supposed to have is the one thing that comes after him. Don't that sound like Adam and Eve? You got all this stuff in the garden, but the one thing. You could have tempted me with anything. But the yeah. one thing that I'm not supposed to have, that's what you want me to have? You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's so crazy because we look at the Adam and Eve story and we like, look, dude, you you were in absolute relationship with God. Like, God was walking with you in the garden. Like, it said his voice walked. Like, how did, how did the voice even walk? You know what I mean? Like... You are experiencing things that nobody else has experienced right. in the garden. I mean, you don't even got to, like, work. Everything's just there. He's giving you authority to name this and that. And you can have everything in the garden. It's yours. It's a perfect place made just for you. Just And you can have everything, but just don't eat of that tree right there. I feel like if somebody said you can have all the money in the world, just don't go to that one city, I would be okay. You can travel anywhere in the world you want for free. You can experience all these things. Just don't go to New Zealand. I ain't even think about New Zealand. Like, I don't know nothing about New Zealand. I don't need to go there. But the thing is, they went there. They ate of it, and then they got kicked out. And we scratched our heads years later, like, come on, dude. You messed it up for all of us. Don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. But if we bring it to our thing, our modern day is, you know, sometimes people look at Christianity, and when the Bible says to pick up your cross and deny yourself, and you know what I mean, to live by the principles that he has for us, you're like, well, God, you know, what I like don't fit into that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, some of the things I like to do don't fit into what you want for me. Right. But God says, look, I, I gave you this, these instructions and these principles to live by so that you can live the best life. Mm -hmm. But you so stuck on what's good and fun that you're turning down the best life. It's not amazing. It's amazing, right? It's the same concept of the garden. So now we can't even point fingers at them no more because we can relate. But still. So we find the one thing that he's not supposed to have is the thing that chases him and in seven it says it came to pass after these things that the master's wife oh hold on we're in the we're over in uh the message let's go to let's go back to eight he wouldn't do it he said to his master's wife look with me here my master doesn't give a second thought to anything that goes on here he put me in charge of everything he owns he treats me as an equal and the only thing he hasn't turned over to me is you. And you're his wife. After all, how could I violate his trust and sin against God? Another thing I want to point out here is that how could I violate his trust and sin against God? So we know that it would be sin for him to sleep with his wife. But one thing about Joseph was that he was a man of character. Mm. Because he just didn't consider the sin against God. But he filtered it through my character towards the person who rules over me. Right. That's good right there. And that's something that people want to get around a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible don't, you know, I guess it would be, you know, spiritual for me to read my Bible all day at work. You know what I mean? God would love that. But 
am I breaking the trust yeah, of the Lord. people <laughs> who I'm in in a relationship with? In relationship with, or my boss's trust, yeah. who's trusted me to give him an honest day's work. Right. But I decided to take that honest day's work and read the Bible because I think God would like that. Actually, <laughs> you can read the Bible on your lunch break. You can. Because you're supposed to give him an honest day's work because that's what true character, true good character would do because he's entrusting that to you. So, um, he said, how can I violate his trust and sin against God? And 10 said, she pestered him day after day, but he stood his ground. He refused to go to bed with her. Um, and then at 11, it says, on one of these days, he came to the house to do his work, and none of the household servants happened to be there. Oh, just great. She grabbed him by his cloak, saying, sleep with me. He left his coat in her hand and ran out of the house. Oh. When she realized he had left his coat in her hand and ran outside, she called to the house servants, look. This Hebrew shows up, and before you know it, he's trying to seduce. He's trying to seduce us. He tried to make love to me, but I yelled as loud as I could with all my yelling and screaming. He left his coat beside me here and ran outside. He lied. <laughs> Ain't that just like somebody trying to set you up? Get mad. They, he, she was coming after him. He said no. She got so bold that she grabbed his coat to try to pull him in to sleep with her. And he ran. Now, one thing about this principle, and I am big on principles that we can apply to our life today. Hence the reason that we're called Relevant Church. Amen. Um, one thing I love about Joseph in this text is that he didn't stick around. He didn't pray for the young lady. He didn't say, you know, I bought you up, I bought you up in the name of Jesus. He didn't say, you know, um, I'm not going to do that, sister. No, he ran. Sometimes there's some things in your life that you just got to run from. You got to say anything. Right. I'll talk to you later. You don't even got to say that. Like, there's some things, like when you first get saved, a lot of people like to go right back to their old friends. They like to go right back to the life they used to live to tell everybody about Jesus. And it's good in thought, right? But... <laughs> If you were just living the life they were living last week, and let's hypothetically say it was a life of drugs or drinking over the top, you know what I mean? It was just, you know, a life that could have pulled you into almost an addiction basis. And all of a sudden you get saved, you know, you accept Jesus Christ, and you want to go back, right back to that circle of friends tomorrow. And it's Might like, look, <laughs> <laughs> look, I got saved now. I'm going to tell you all about Jesus, but you're back in the same element. You're back in the same rhythm that they are in, and you just got saved yesterday. And you was feeling good over there. And you was feeling good over there. It was something that you liked doing. It was mm -hmm. something that was coming between you and God. Mm -hmm. If you put yourself back in that same situation, I don't know if you're strong enough to withstand from falling back into the same things you were in. Right. In the most cleaned up way I can say that. <laughs> but the thing is, Joseph was like, I cannot stay here and argue with this woman. It's definite that she wants me and she wants to take me out. So I just need to run. He's probably fast too. You know, I heard her say, don't give no place to the devil, right? Nothing. There's some things in your life maybe God has already delivered you from or you're, you're working through and he's taking you step by step, however, whatever phase you're at. Mm -hmm. It's some things that you just cannot give any life to at all you might used to have a drinking problem you might have been a heavy alcoholic and you know after god has delivered you and everything the devil was like oh well you know you delivered now you know how to maintain you know how to handle that just go ahead and get you one glass of wine and for some people some people can do it some people can do it other but people they cannot it throws up a wedge between them and god Correct. because it takes them down some people can go to the drug house and minister because that's not their temptation. Right. Other people, you send them to the drug house and all of a sudden they ain't going to come back. Right. Right? You're right. There are some people 
that can go, I don't know, to other places that people can't mm -hmm. and minister effectively because they're strong in that area. Mm -hmm. But if we're honest with ourselves, we know that we have areas that we're not as strong in. Mm -hmm. And those things, when they come to you, just run. Run from that towards Christ and don't give any place to it because it's trying to drag you down. That's true. Talk. So. True. And there's always a way of escape. There is a way of escape. The Bible so says, every temptation, God provides a way of escape. It's just, are you going to take that way? Right. You know, are you going to take that escape? Because the way you're going, if you need an escape, you're probably not somewhere that you really want to leave. Right. Oh, when it comes to the temptation. And if you find yourself struggling there, and you're like, man, I already, I didn't do well with that, with those tests and those challenges and different things like that. I understand that God's grace and mercy, that's the beautiful part about it, right? It's yeah. the beautiful part about it, that his grace and mercy is here for you every day. Amen. Amen. Now, <clears throat> she says she's going to keep his coat right here until the master came home. And she told him the same story. She said, the Hebrew slave, the one you brought to us. <laughs> Turn it, turn it. <laughs> turn it around. Okay. Came after me and tried to use me for his plaything. When I yelled and screamed, he left his coat with me and ran outside. When his master heard his story, when his master heard his wife's story telling him, these are the things your slave did to me, he was furious. Joseph's master took him and threw him into the jail where the king's prisoners were locked up. But there in jail, God was still with Joseph. He reached out in kindness to him and put him on good terms with the head of the jailer. The head jailer put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners. He ended up managing the whole operation. The head jailer gave Joseph free reign, never even checked on him because God was with him. And whatever he did, God made sure it worked out for the best. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. And it goes what we were talking about, all things working together for a good. Because, like, you know, she lied on me. I'm trying to live upright. Right. And she lied. And then he believed her. And, That's like, crazy. he was, like, Joseph was, like, at the top. And then all of a sudden, because of one person's lies, down at the bottom. And then he's thrown into a jail. It's like, are you serious? I go from being a slave? Like, having a life made? And now I'm in jail? How in the what in the world? What in the world? But God was with him and then, you know, gave him favor with the jail keeper and then he's in charge of all that. Like everything he did, God made sure it worked out. It's crazy. It, it's so crazy because so a lot of times we're so taught on what we have makes us prosperous. What we have, what we have, where we are, where we live, what we drive. Right. It's what makes us blessed. What you know, you know, if you're facing problems. Oh God, I wish I was blessed. Right. You know, whatever comes in that's hard for us to get past, all of a sudden we question the state of us being blessed. Mm -hmm. But I put to you today, because Jesus lives on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you, and you accepted him into your heart, that you're in a constant state of blessing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because he's with you. Right. No matter what it looks like, no matter what the physical looks like, mm -hmm. understand that if God is with you, you are blessed. You have no other choice. And you can see prosperity right where you are. Joseph, now look what we're talking about. We're talking about somebody who was favored. Mm. He had a coat of many colors given to him by his father. There was favor on his life from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. They stripped the coat off of him, but the coat was just a symbol mm. of what existed on him. Mm. And so the cars, the, what we drive, I mean, what we drive, the house we live in, the job we have, the finances we have, the resources we have, all that stuff is a byproduct mm -hmm. of the blessing that's on our lot. Right. It's not the blessing. So just because you don't see them yet, don't think that you're not blessed. Because you are in a constant state of being blessed. You know what I mean? You can be not in the job you want to be, but be prosperity. I mean, being prosperous. Because he's with you. You understand that? So I'm encouraging you today to have a different perspective of 
yeah, when I get this, then people will know that I'm blessed. Well, it's not about people knowing, it's about you knowing. Do you know that what God has for you is great and that it's already operating in your life right now? The message that we preached yesterday um, at Relevant was called Unearth and saying that God didn't come back to add anything to the earth. Right. It's already it's there. Right all we have to do is get the wisdom and the revelation from God to how to use what's already on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm telling you today, look, Joseph was favored by his father. Um, his brothers plotted to kill him. They decided not to kill him, but they sold him into slavery. Favor still on his life. He lands in Potiphar's house, a slave owner. He's a slave. But because of the favor on his life, he rises to the top and is ruler over all that he has. Somebody sets him up. He didn't do anything wrong. Mm -mm. Sets him up to try to destroy who he is. He gets sent to jail. And even in jail, God is with him. And he rises up to the place where the jailer puts him over everything. Even in the jail. So this should speak to us that to look at our life like, okay, God, you got this. You got this. Because I couldn't have planned a better story. No. Because, you know, who was up to us? Well, we'll get to that end, but can we skip the whole, you know, being lied on, being tempted, being thrown in jail, being thrown in a pit? Can we right. just skip that part? Because, <laughs> you know, I really don't like being dirty. Or I don't want to be claustrophobic. I don't want to be in that pit. Right. But you got to. And, you know, God, like you said, it just had it all planned out. It was part of the plan. It was part of the plan. It was some stuff that was uncomfortable for temporary times, but the plan overall was great. And see, we didn't finish the story today of Joseph, but it's an awesome ending that we're going to follow up with and dig into the rest of it. But be encouraged in the fact that no matter what it looks like, no matter where you find yourself, no matter the resources that you have, that you are blessed you are. you are you really are and ask God to give you the eyes that he has to look around at your life and see those things because when you begin to see how blessed you really are then you can believe in freedom more and begin to seek him for how to utilize the resources that you haven't even tapped into yet there's a lot there's a lot I mean we look at the earth and how you know automobiles came out of the earth you know, God didn't come back to add anything to make automobiles. It was in the earth, but the more technology began to grow, people started to get in revelation about how to use different things. All of a sudden, out of what we already had, becomes something that's an awesome resource to us now. And it's the same thing that's on the inside of you. You might have, oh man, you know, I can draw a little bit, and I got a little creative nature. And God may be like, oh, well, yeah, I wanted to pull those together so that you can do graphic design and you have a nice company. Boom. Right. And you're helping employ people or you're helping, um, you know, ministry or you're helping people have a great business brand, you know, because of your creativity and your being able to draw. Two right. things, but when God speaks to you, he can take those two small things and make something great. He really does. Amen. You have anything else, Pastor Lita? No, that's all. Well, we're going to pray. Let us pray. God, we thank you give you all the praise today. God, we thank you for um, this Resurrection Sunday that we just had, Easter celebration. God, we thank you that um, you did get up. And we ask God that everybody watching tonight will experience the favor and blessing of God on their life, God, that they realize who they are in you. And God, they won't let situations determine um, how blessed they are, but they realize that you being in their life equips them to live prosperous. God, you, had, you said that Above all things, you wish that we prosper and be in good health, even as our soul prosper. God. So I ask that these viewers tonight, God, that their soul will prosper in you. God, and they see their health prosper, and they that they'll be prosperous, Father, in their life. And we thank you for that now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're so excited that you guys joined us today. Um, we do want to let you know we will be back on is it April 11th. Yes. Monday, April 11th at 
And if the weather permits, we'll be here. Or you just never know. You never know where you can find us. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Um, if you would like to give to Relevant Church, it's an awesome thing that Relevant is doing in the community. Um, people are being helped. Things are being established. All because of you. All because of you meeting God right where he has placed you because you listening to the voice of God and, and giving to the ministry in which it's planted. And I just want to assure you that none of the money goes to us. It does not come to us. It comes, goes straight into Relevant Church, which goes straight into the community. Um, so if you want to give, you can give online um, at our website, the same website you're at. There should be a icon, I believe, that says Give Now. Um, and if you're not there, you don't see it, you can just refresh www.relchurch.com and there should be a button where you can hit to give. And it's completely safe. Um, and it goes straight to the church yep. from there. Straight to the church from there. If you have any questions, feedbacks, or comments, feel free to let us know using that box. It's right under the screen you're watching. And um, we'll talk to you soon. See you later. You guys have a great night. All right.